The title of today's message is Honoring Women, the Forgotten Gift. Honoring Women, the Forgotten Gift. All right. You have the whole book of Ruth in your first few pages. We are not going to read it verbatim. Everybody said, praise God. <laughs> but we are going to use it for a guideline today. So there was a famine in the land, uh, and Imelech and let's see here. There was a let me just back up. This Imelech and his wife was Naomi. They there was a famine and they went over to Moab. Moab was not they were not uh, they were not a sanctioned uh, group of believers. So you know. The Bible says, do not be unequally yoked. And they went over here and there and hooked themselves up with uh, some people that God just couldn't bless in the Old Testament. And then they wasn't there to have kids with them. And so they had two kids, and then the, the husband died, and then both the sons died. Well, now as both sons died, the women were free. And Naomi released her two daughter-in-laws. She said, just go back to your kinsmen, find you somebody else. I'm going to go back to my home country now. One of the daughter-in-law said, okay, I'm going to go find me a new fella. Maybe I'll do better. And then there was Ruth who said, you know what? I saw something in you and the God that you serve. And she chose to honor Naomi. Now, she was going to a land that was known for her to be rejected and shunned. But yet she chose to go anyways. And so then we said, uh, we, we go on down and we see where she, uh, in verse 6, 16, but Ruth said, don't force me to leave you. Don't make me go home. Where you go, I go. Where you live, I live. Your people are my people. Your God is my God. Where you die, I'll die, and that's where I'll be buried. So help me God. Not even death itself is going to come between us. And then so they returned. And uh, Naomi and, the, and, and Ruth, the foreigner, they go back and they arrived at the beginning of the barley harvest. Now, she sent... Uh, According to Old Testament law, they were to leave the edge of the field so those people that had nothing could clean a little something to eat. It's how they took care of their homeless problem. All right? So now we have her. She's pretty well homeless, begging, living, living on the scraps of other people. Now, for the record, there was laws that said uh, that the next kinsmen are supposed to marry these women and take care of them. Well, none of the kinsmen wanted Ruth because she was an outsider or a foreigner. But that's why when they came in, they said, she's not, she's not good enough. And so, make a long story short, uh, she went to Boaz's field. Boaz uh, was a much older man. And uh, he's like, he, he caught her gleaning. He's like, what are you doing here? And uh, she answered him. And then he told her, he blessed her he, right then and there. He gave her a bunch of extra, did those things. And when she went home and told her mother-in-law about it, she, uh, when she went home and told her mother-in-law about it, she was excited and went back and Boaz kept blessing her. And then her mother-in-law came up with a pretty risky thing. There was a, their way of courting back then, a way of marriage where certain things had to happen. And if Boaz hadn't done what he had done, she would have been killed. And so, he sent her back in there at the harvest festival and uh, she crawled up next to him and he threw his blanket over and then went out and he's like, now we got to make this right. We, we've just courted and I got to marry her. Nothing else happened. That was just how it went back then. If he hadn't done that, she'd have been killed right then and there. Okay, y'all with me? Sounds like an imperfect woman that was doing her best to honor someone. You with me? 
And so then Boaz went and seek the next kinsman, and he starts off asking him, you know that piece of land that so-and-so used to own, our other kinsman? What are you going to do with that? Are you going to claim it or what? He said, yeah, I'll claim it. I'll take care of it. I'm going to buy it. Because he wasn't, Boaz wasn't next in line. And so Boaz was being slick. He said, well, what about that girl named Ruth? She comes with the property, you know. He said, oh, I can't do that. She's a foreigner. I can't. I can't do that. That'll bring shame to my household. Boaz said, I ain't worried. I'll take her. And so they, <coughs> then they went and got married. And when she came back, when, when, when Naomi came back, they changed her name to Bitter. She was very bitter. And But here was Ruth who just kept on honoring her for the woman of God that she was. She'd seen her lose her husband. She'd seen her lose everything that she owned. She'd seen her come back. And Ruth kept choosing to honor her. Y'all with me? And then, uh, my papers are not cooperating. There's just too many of them. Glory. So we see Boaz redeems Ruth. <clears throat> and then she married him. And Boaz, of course, they got together. They had a baby. And uh, says maybe Naomi took the baby and realized how she, I'm, I'm paraphrasing she realized how blessed she was she realized that God was smiling on her and here's the cool thing that all sounds like a cool story of someone learning to honor somebody else right you see where Ruth honored Naomi and God blessed it well this is their family tree Y'all ready? So the neighborhood woman started calling him Naomi's baby boy, but his real name was Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of David. Because Ruth chose to honor Naomi. She was grafted into the theology vine for those that don't know of Christ, of Jesus of Nazareth. Someone said he didn't. So I'm so thankful that when we choose to honor, God makes a way no matter where we come from or what we've done to be grafted into the vine. Y'all still with me today? Here's the genealogy. This is the family tree of Prius. Prius had Hezron. Hezron had Ram. Ram had Emadite. Emadite had Nashon. Nashon had Solomon, Salmon, Salmon had Boaz, Boaz had Obed, Obed had Jesse, and Jesse had David. So there we see. Honor is a powerful thing. The word honor, the Greek and the Hebrew here, means to prize. That is a fixed value valuation upon implication to revere, to honor, to put value on. When we put value on something, though, how many know the value can change from the condition of the object if you're not careful? But when God calls us to honor women, he says, I put the value on them, you don't. Come on. He says, I put the value on them, you don't. How I many know God put a value upon Ruth? And Boaz redeemed it regardless of what anybody else thought. Nobody else thought she was worth redeeming. But because the honor she showed her mother-in-law, God put a value upon Ruth and caused Boaz to redeem her. Ladies, some of you in here need to know that your value is far above Ruth's. That you are valuable. God has put a value upon you. There's none like you. You're one of a kind. 
and your value is far above what anybody else can think or ask. You can do, God made you to do things that nobody else can do. Amen? Amen. They'll drive us crazy. They'll make us want to pull our hair out. You can see how far me and Pastor Timmy are going. <laughs> <laughs> and I was doing so well. Yeah. Getting deep. But it, we have to stop. We, the, our society has stopped valuing women and mothers because we've started looking them through them as society does. Instead of looking at them as God does. Matter of fact, ladies, you can even help, it'll help you respect us men if you respect us because what God says about us, not about what we do. But it ain't Father's Day, so I'll, I digress. So, 1 Timothy 5, 2. The elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters in all purity. Honor widows that are widows indeed. Now, I'm just going to do a little teaching here this morning. Real widows are somebody that don't have somebody else to take care of them. You know, or unfortunately in today's world, people that's called Corbin. Corbin is when they would just throw some money at them and throw them in a nursing home and forget about them. And that was even in the New Testament. And then as a church, we should help take care of them. We should honor them, support them. Amen. I mean, there's a lot of lonely people out there. But I've also met a lot of widows that weren't really widows. They had other people. They had those things, but they still, that's why we're not, gonna, we're not talking about widows today. But the point is, is that uh, we're to honor them. Well, they're grumpy, they're frumpy, Pastor, and they just always expect something for nothing. Well, they've, they've lived their life. They've, they, they've lost the one that was supposed to complete them, and now God is sending you in to help. And you just keep honoring them. Y'all with me? Then it said, reverently honor an older woman as you would your mother. Now, unfortunately, I used to run with some guys that I wouldn't want them to treat my treat, I wouldn't want them to treat my mother as they treated their mother. Because they didn't know how to treat anybody. But we're talking about people here that knew how to treat their mom. Now, my mama, she's still mama to a whole bunch of wild boys all across the land. And they still are. When they come to my mama's house, they when I was a heathen, bikers, we they didn't cuss, they didn't know yes ma'am, no ma'am, thank you ma'am. You know, she was only five foot, she still is, she's only five foot some tall, and they were scared to death of her. And honored. When was the last time that you gave thought to how you honored? The older women. Now, now, older women, guess what? God said you're supposed to be teaching the younger women. In today's society, people said, I did my part, let them learn it the same way I did at the school of hard knocks. How about you help them along? Amen, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> And younger women as your sisters, uh, you know, not as not as something to attain to, to conquer, to come over uh, until they're your bride and God makes them that way. You should treat them as your sister and respect them. Amen. Amen. Take care of widows that who are destitute. They can't, you know, not because they're just strapping, but because they have. If you don't help them, they're not going to make it. You with me? Oh, look, I got 10 minutes. Y'all just bear with me. I know I'll be a little, little teaching today. First promise, children and parents. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Everybody's like, get them kids back up here. I said, honor me. <laughs> But I want you to point out there's not an age limit on this. 
as long as your parents are still alive, whether they deserve it or not, whether they're even believers or not, you're to honor them. And so honor is to put value on them. You put value on them because how I many you know if they wasn't for them, you wouldn't be in this life. Right. Amen. Whether they meant well, I listen, I had a parent who was not the best also. My mom was phenomenal. My dad, he had some issues. But you know, as I've grown older, he's dead and gone for a long time now. I can't tell you that the man loved me. He just didn't really know how to do much himself. But, but he did. But I was thankful that I had a pastor growing up. They'd tell me, you got to love him. I said, I don't want to love him. I don't even like the guy. I hate him. You can't say that, Brian. <laughs> I'm so thankful they kept after me, kept giving me the word. Because, you know, he passed when I was 19. But I had a couple of years with him, and I got to love him and love on him and make things right with him. And if, but if I had that, people kept pointing me to the word to honor him in spite of himself, I would have never got to have that time with him. Are you all with me today? Come on, work. It's a simple message. Yes. But when you leave here today, I want you to start, you know, how many in here, and don't raise your hand, before this message today, you honored people who you felt like deserved it. But how many know you're, you, you can't put your valuation system on it. There's just certain people, certain individuals, God said, you put a value on them because I said so, and you look at them the way that I said. And one of those happens to be our mothers. And you know, some of you got some wild kids. Just sit and watch this message when you get home. Oh my. That it may be well with thee, and they may as live long on the earth. It's first promise. If you honor them, you're going to live long. You want to take away days of your life? Dishonor your parents. Dishonor your mother. Dishonor your father. I didn't write it. I'm just telling you. I don't want to do that. Okay. You're going to have a short life. Keep dishonoring them. I mean, no, the word's true. You can argue with it, you can dislike it, you can try to change it all you want, but it's true. So you can hit it as Deacon has thought this morning. It's blessings and curses. You get to choose which ones you want to do. You want to have a blessed life, or do you want to walk out some curses? God, God honor, God's honor is a big deal, right? Yes. Children, do what your parents tell you. Whew, that's pretty funny. <laughs> another version here this is only right honor your father and mother is the first commandment that has a promise attached to it namely so you will live well and have a long life honor is something given not something they earn or deserve <coughs> if I get nothing else in your spirit today I want you to realize honor is something that is not given given. Some, honor is something given, not something earned or deserved. Honor is something given, not something they earn or deserve. I'm going to say it again. Honor is something given, not something they earn or deserve. If I only waited to honor people that I felt like deserved it, as much as I've been through in my life, I don't know if I'd ever find anybody. Just being honest with you. But when I choose to act like Christ and honor people regardless of who they are and what they are, I mean, oh, I'm showing them the love of Christ. Amen. And I'm putting a value on them. And how many you know ladies need a value put on them? We're going to look at some more verses here in a minute. First Peter, I'm on, then I'll wrap this, tie this together. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. I didn't write it, man. Giving honor unto the wife. Put a value upon them. Something you value, how do you treat it? As unto the weaker vessel. Now, 
There has been much teaching on this. I am not going to get crucified this morning. I'm going to say a little bit more on this. Because we just seen in Proverbs 31, if that's a weaker vessel, that's a tough lady. <laughs> right? So, but how many know that Adam's the one that got in trouble when Eve's the one that made the choice because Adam knew that? I mean, we're hurting their cover. You know, whenever, listen, we have women preachers here. We have women teachers here. So hear me as I just touch on this this morning. When Paul told women to be quiet in the church, because used to the men sit on one, and they still do this actually over in Turkey and Jordan. The women sit on one side of the church and the men sit on the other side and the preacher would be preaching something deep and they'd be yelling across. I don't know like some of you ladies still do. You know, what did he say? What did he mean by that? What's going on? He said, y'all be quiet. Quit disturbing the service. Quit asking questions in the middle of service. Wait till after. Y'all what's that got to do with being a wicked person? Let me read it. Let me finish this before I get in more trouble. As being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Husbands, you in turn must treat your wives with tenderness, viewing them as feminine partners who deserve to be honored, so they are co-heirs with you in the divine grace of, of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. So, you know, they're, they're the feminine side. They're, they're the tender side. They're, they're the side that... that uh, Keeps you in, in line. That's not a less than thing. Come on, are you with me? That's the Proverbs 31 coming into play there. And so, we have to honor them. I said all of that. I think I'm, yeah. Now I can, now I can preach. There you go. I got three minutes to wrap it up. The message today is simple. God has told us to honor women. He's told us to honor mothers. And honestly, I don't see much of it anymore. I myself try to do it, but, you know, our society just says all kinds of weird things. But I'd like to challenge you today as men and women of God to start putting a value back upon your relationships and especially... For, for the men that's listening, to, to honor the women in your life. Be their cover. Y'all with me? But some of you even have lost people in your life. Well, you know what? They may not be saved yet, but you can still honor them to make them to want to be saved. Come on. If you wait for them to deserve it, it'll never happen. But we see that's not what God asks of us, right? And ladies, y'all do a pretty good job of this around here. We're blessed at Broken James Church with some extraordinary women. But I want to challenge you to honor one another, to put value on your sisters, to honor the older ladies in your life, and to let God move in that area. You know, it's Mother's Day. We're supposed to do things. I don't usually even preach a Mother's Day message. This is probably the most Mother's Day, Mother's Day thing I've ever done. Amen. <laughs> but... I don't know if I'm getting it across well enough, but, you know, you say, well, Pastor, we've been talking about moves of God. We've been having phenomenal times at the altar. We've, we, what's this got to do with all the other stuff God's been doing? Because if we can't honor each other, if we can't bring this forward, we're going to quench the Spirit of God. Amen. 